All right, today we're going to talk about a topic that a lot of clients come to me and ask me questions about, so I think it's worth talking about. And that is whether or not when you have a business and you hire somebody to work for you, the question is, are they an employee or an independent contractor? Now, an employee is somebody who works, uh, they get taxes taken out of their pay, and the, at the end of the year, they receive a W-2 form. And then they report that as wages on their tax return, and at that point, they can take the appropriate deductions if they have some. An independent contractor, on the other hand, is somebody, they, they don't have any taxes taken out, they receive a form, a 1099 MISC form. Usually the uh, income that they earn, it's listed in box seven, which is non-employee compensation. And they'll file a schedule C on their tax return and they'll take all the appropriate deductions and expenses that they would have. Now, companies like to uh, give people 1099s, a lot of small businesses do because it's a lot easier they don't have the administrative work of keeping the payroll up and taking the taxes out and turning them into the government and matching the Social Security and Medicare taxes. There's a lot of things that you have to do when you have payroll. 1099 independent contractors, it's real simple. All you do is you keep track of what you paid your workers and at the end of the year you issue a 1099 form to them and it's up to them to uh, pay the appropriate taxes. However, the problem is, is that the IRS does not give you a choice as to how you want to classify a worker. They dictate it to you. And the main, there's a lot of questions that they ask. There's, there's a form that they have where you can, uh, there's, like a, there's a lot of different questions they ask which de determines whether or not the person is, the, is a, an employee or a contractor. But the important thing is that well, I guess what I'm saying is the main criteria to determine whether a person is an employee and, or a contractor is the amount of control. So in general, the more you control somebody and the more you take care of them, the more that person is an employee. So if the person's an employee, they're probably going to have set working hours, they're going to be supervised when they're doing their job, they're going to be told how to do their job. If there's a problem, they're not going to worry about it. Their employer is going to take care of any problems that come up, and they're going to be taken care of. It's almost like the employer is their parent. The, if there's a problem, the employer will handle it, and the employer will provide everything that's needed for the worker to do their job. That's an employee. They should get a W-2 form, and taxes should be taken out. An independent contractor, on the other hand, is a self-employed independent person. If you hire somebody to do a job for you, and let's say you tell them, I need the job done by next Tuesday. I don't care how you do it. I don't care when you do it. You provide the equipment or the computer to do the work. I don't care if you do the work at 3.30 in the morning, as long as the job is done by next Tuesday because I need it to give to our client. That's a good example of an independent contractor because that person's on their own. They're doing their own work. They're providing their own equipment. They're probably working out of their house and uh, basically they're on their own and they could have other clients as well that they're doing work for. Now in most situations it's never going to be totally one way or the other. In other words you could have an independent contractor where you may provide the computer for them to work on but that in itself won't make them an employee. And what, what happens is you got to look at all the things that that the work is doing. Are you supervising them? Are you providing equipment? Are you telling them how to do their job? Are you telling them what hours to work? And when you weigh all these things together, it's like a pendulum. It'll either, it'll either lean more towards an employee or towards a contractor. So uh, what I recommend is the next time you hire somebody to work for you, determine how much control you have over this person. And if it's a substantial amount, then you really should make them a W-2 employee. But if you figure that the person's pretty much on their own and you're not dictating their hours or how they're supposed to do their work or when they're supposed to do their work, then you can classify them as a 1099 independent contractor and you can save yourself some paperwork. So that's the, uh, the information for today and uh, I look forward to seeing you in my next video.
Thanks.